everybody. I'm Vera Stewart and welcome to The Very Vera Show. It's a little bit of an unusual day today. For the first time ever, I am filming in front of a live audience. And these folks are live, let me tell you. So we've got quite a treat today. We are in the Sub-Zero Wolf and Cove showroom in Dallas, Texas. You know, Sub-Zero Wolf and Cove has been a huge part of our show. They've allowed us to cook on the most amazing appliances. The quality of what we get to use and how our recipes turn out because of it is just absolutely incredible. So we're going to celebrate today. And since it's close to Thanksgiving, we thought we would give thanks by making a beautiful Thanksgiving dinner. So I cannot wait to introduce you to Chef Donald Chalco. He is their corporate chef here in the Dallas showroom. He's going to be making three recipes using this amazing equipment. He's gonna start with the convection steam oven turkey. So moist, so delicious, I cannot wait. And then a Parmesan polenta, a great side dish for this meal, but it's perfect for any meal. And then a grilled broccoli rob. This just pops with color. It's just beautiful. And then I'm gonna be making the pecan squares out of the new cookbook, and I'm gonna get Donald in there with me to give him a tip or two on that. So we've got a lot to do. Let's go meet Chef Donald and have this amazing showroom smelling like Thanksgiving. All right, so I'm ready to get this Thanksgiving show on the road, and I cannot wait to introduce you to Chef Donald Chalco. He is the corporate chef here at Sub-Zero Wolf and Cove in Dallas, right. and welcome. Thank you for having me. We've had the best time getting to know each other. We definitely have. You are actually the fifth chef from Sub-Zero and Wolf that I have had on the oh, show, wow. and I've heard that the fifth time is the charm. Well, I hope so. Let's, let's hope it. Let's I, I cross our fingers. I think that's just going to be amazing. Okay, so we generally start with a side dish or an appetizer when we do the show to kind of make it go in order of eating, but we really want this whole showroom to smell like a turkey. We do. So you had a little bit of work to do. Tell us what you've done yeah, to get the turkey ready. Yeah, of course. So yeah, what we did is we brought one gallon of water up to a simmer in a medium-sized pot. We added salt, sugar, garlic, pepper, thyme, onion, rosemary, and quartered lemons. Wow. <laughs> it's a lot, I know, but. No wonder it tastes so good. But it will be amazing after you do all of that. Now, after that, we're gonna simmer it for about 10 to 15 minutes or until the salt and sugar is fully dissolved. We're gonna remove that pot from the stove and we're gonna add it to a gallon of ice water. Oh, wow. So what that's gonna do is gonna rapidly cool that really hot liquid mm -hmm. to a temperature where we can put that turkey in. Right. Now, after that, we're gonna put our turkey in there. Now, we don't wanna drop it in because we don't want <laughs> turkey juices going no, everywhere. Carefully. Very carefully. We're gonna submerge that turkey. And from here, you put it into a nice cold refrigerator from anywhere from 24 hours to my opinion, two days. Right, and you know, this is where it's important to recognize that that step is gonna be in place to make room in your refrigerator for it. Now, before this, we already took a turkey out of the brine already, and we gently washed it and patted it dry, and we're gonna get ready for the next step that okay. I like to do on my turkey. And that is for you, Vera, to mix some softened butter and so some mayonnaise together. Okay, so tell me what size turkey that is. So this is about a 15 pound turkey. Okay. Now that recipe that we just talked about is going to be up to 16 to 20 pounds, which is an excellent size. So if you're doing a lot of cooking, if you're doing a, a Thanksgiving dinner for yeah. a lot of people, this will work for you. Okay, so 15 pounds is good for about how many people? 15 pounds, you wanna, I think it's a one pound per person, mm -hmm. so it's about 15 people. Okay. Now, if you're big eaters like I am, <laughs> We might want to go a little bit more if we're doing 15 people. We might want to go up to that 20 pound Well, range. or you could maybe do an extra turkey breast. Okay, is that, does that That look? looks okay. perfect. Okay, so chef, why butter and mayonnaise? So butter and mayonnaise, well butter is traditionally used in a lot of them. The mayonnaise is probably the trickier one because if you think about what mayonnaise is, it's just oil. Right. It's just solidified oil. Yeah, just yeah we're just gonna that. put it on there yeah. and smear it on. So that mayonnaise just gives it a, a little bit of a richer flavor, lets it brown a little bit more, and it just 
makes it adhere. Because if we use like regular olive oil, what, what olive oil is just a liquid, it's just going to fall right off. Right, right. So this stays on a little bit longer. It's able to adhere. I'll let you do the other side. I will definitely do the other side. And we're just going to smear it on nice and not too thick. We're going to go a nice, even yeah. little layer. Really, we want that breast really covered nicely. A little bit on these legs and thighs. Okay, we're putting this in the steam convection oven today, right? Correct, yeah, we're gonna put it in the convection steam oven and we're gonna set it for 350 degrees using convection steam. Okay, okay. What if you don't have a convection steam oven? What that's do you a recommend great in question. a traditional oven? Yeah, that's a great question. So if you have a regular oven, a non-convection oven, we're gonna set it for 400 degrees, we're gonna cook it for one hour, and after that, we're gonna drop it to 325 degrees, and we're gonna cook it for four to four and a half hours, mm -hmm. or until the breast reads 165 degrees Fahrenheit. Now, if you have a convection oven, we're gonna be very similar. We're gonna drop it to 375 degrees for okay. one hour. Again, drop it to 325, and then the same thing. 165 and in the And that one has a probe. And right? that one has awesome. a probe. Okay, so we are gonna get this together, just as he said, he's described it so well. I know all of you will be able to do this. And when we come back from the break, we're gonna get started on the Parmesan polenta, which is one of my favorites. Oh, I love so it. don't go away, come back and join us. Welcome back, everybody. Y'all still with me out there? Uh, if you're just joining me and you hear the clapping, it's really unusual. We're in season 12 of The Very Very Show doing our first live audience ever. We're in Dallas, Texas at the showroom of Sub-Zero Wolf & Co. And I'm with Chef Donald Chalco, who is helping us put together an amazing Thanksgiving dinner. All right, so what are we gonna be making now? We've got the turkey in the oven. Yeah, so we're gonna making, be making a Parmesan polenta. And okay. to do that, we're gonna start off with a little bit of garlic. Okay. And that's that's gonna definitely go gonna get the aromas going. Oh yeah, and we're gonna do this on a medium heat. After that, we're gonna add some shallots, just like that. And we're gonna mm. spread it around. We have a little bit of olive oil on the bottom of that pan. And we're just gonna cook it really gently. Okay, and we're, why is that? Because when we're making this, we're not looking for a lot of color, really okay. any color at all. So okay. we're not looking to caramelize or brown anything. All I'm doing is trying to release all the natural oils from the garlic and the shallots mm -hmm. so that we have a, that flavor incorporated into the polenta. Well, and you know, that's a good point. And I think all of us think when you put something like that in oil, you're supposed to be getting a caramelization exactly or right. getting it, you know, really tender. And all you're trying to do is loosen up the natural oils. Exactly that's right. right. Yeah, that's a very common assumption that yeah. you're trying to get color Absolutely. on everything. But no, today we just want that flavor to pop. So from here, we're gonna add a little bit of milk. And that's just whole milk. Just whole milk. And, and all of these recipes are gonna be on our website at verybira.com. So Chef was nice enough to share his recipes with us and I hope you'll try them. And then we have some water. And if you wanted to use chicken stock, you could oh, definitely okay. do that too. Awesome. It's just gonna add more and more flavor. And lastly, you wanna add that cream uh, bear? Sure, absolutely. And we're gonna add that cream. Perfect. And give that a stir for me while okay. I put this up. Now, from here, this is for me the most important part. We're gonna bring it to a simmer, and also we're gonna add all our seasoning. Okay. We're gonna add some of these chopped herbs, which is a mixture of parsley, rosemary, and thyme. Oh, that sounds like a song by Simon and Garfunkel. I think it is, isn't it? <laughs> and then a little, we're gonna do some salt and pepper also. Okay. And I'll let you do the honors on that. And we're, for me, I always season a little bit heavy at this stage. Mm, okay. Now the reason I season heavy is because once we add that polenta, it's gonna get really thick and it's gonna be harder to mix. Okay. But now we're just gonna wait for it to come to a simmer. Okay. And now we're at a simmer, we're gonna slowly rain in the polenta and we're gonna whisk at the same time. Okay, and why are we going slow? So we're going slow because we want to avoid as many lumps as possible. Oh yeah, okay. So we're gonna do that, and it's gonna thicken up pretty quickly. And we're just gonna keep stirring. 
Wow. And it's going to thicken up nice, nicely. You can already see it getting thicker and mm. thicker. Once we get to the thickness we need, we're okay. going to put some Parmesan. And we're going to have to do that during the break, so keep going. And when we come back from the break, we're going to get started on the pecan squares. I'm going to give you a lesson in the kitchen. So y'all don't go anywhere. We're going to have a lot of fun. Vera's Corner is sponsored by Tax Slayer. It's your refund. Go get it. Sub-Zero Wolf & Co., the premium leading refrigeration, cooking and dishwashing company, has launched a full suite of new appliances. Let's take a look. First, let's peek at Sub-Zero Designer Series Under Counter Refrigeration. This diverse collection offers luxurious convenience and unmatched style while precisely preserving food, wine, and beverages. Professional heritage, iconic aesthetics, and innovative performance unite in Wolf's boldest and entirely revamped cooking package, the Wolf Dual Fuel Range. Its durable construction and intuitive features ensure every home chef can enjoy predictably delicious results for decades. Providing a sleek alternative to the professional style range, the Wolf Induction Range offers the historic and unparalleled performance of Wolf, including Wi-Fi capabilities and chef-tested cooking modes in a modern shell. And finally, the Wolf E-Series built-in oven offers enhanced cooking performance inside and cleaner design-friendly aesthetics outside. To experience these new appliances in person, visit your local Sub-Zero Wolf and Cove showroom. Start free today at TaxSlayer.com. <laughs> Welcome back, everybody. Y'all having fun? Yeah. Man, everything's bigger in Dallas, Texas, and I'm all about it. So I had you busy during the break. You, you sure did. That polenta. Yeah, during the break, what we did, we added the Parmesan cheese to the polenta. Then I had you, Vera, add that butter. We whisked it until what we wanted it to look like. And then we were done. Oh, man, I cannot wait. And all of you are going to get to enjoy this, too. All right, so we are going to, I'm going to show you how to make a recipe out of my book. I'm ecstatic to learn this because I'm not a baker. Okay, well, so, you're going to be great. one, you're going to be one today. So we're kind of going a little bit out of order with this to get the filling done first. So um, you've got some butter already melted. Yes, ma'am. Now we're going to add some honey. Add some honey. Perfect. Wait, let's add some honey, honey. Oh, <laughs> I like what you did there. Okay, and then we've got some light brown sugar. Light brown sugar. Don't Perfect. let that butter pop back on yes, you. Yes, ma'am. So this filling really, you know, it comes to a boil. It get, it's going to get so crispy on the top of the crust. All right, so stir that together, and then you've got some lemon zest. Lemon zest. So that's kind of an unusual ingredient, you know, for this, and it really just emphasizes the other flavors. It pops the pecans that are going to go in there. So you're going to just stir that about, and then this is going to um, a boil for about three minutes. So while you're stirring that and getting it up to a boil, let me talk about the crust that we made to go with this. So how many of you remember shortbread from Granny? Oh, so yeah. it was my absolute favorite thing. So one of the things that makes this a real comfort food for me during the holidays is the shortbread part. So I beat the butter and sugar for about three minutes, scraped the sides, got it good and incorporated. Then I added my eggs one at a time and vanilla extract. So once that's mixed together, you want to be sure to use sifted flour here. When I tell you to sift it, people, I mean sift it. Then you're gonna add in your baking powder and salt, and I just actually incorporate that with a fork. And then once you've done that, you can add it into your butter and sugar mixture. And you know, Chef, 
you're so neat and clean when you do all this, but it never fails. I'm going to dump it in and the flour is going to go <laughs> everywhere. So I've kind of figured out to use a small measuring cup to add it in and turn the, the beater down a little bit and it works a lot better. So once that's incorporated, this is going to be a very sticky dough. Okay. And so I, I got it as smeared as I could get with my spatula, but then I just take like a tablespoon and push it down so that it goes all the way to the edges of the pan. And it's going to, you know, it's going to stay a little bit sticky. So if you want to sprinkle a little flour on there to make that go better, you can. The spoon's not going to stick? No. Oh, okay. And then once this is spread completely around, I'm going to put it into a 325 degree oven for about 15 minutes or until it's nice and golden. Oh, wow, you've done a great job. Oh, then, thanks, Vera. You know, and three minutes basically is just giving the reader of our recipes an idea of how long something takes. Okay. Um, it's just, generally you're just trying to get it to a nice thick consistency and in the testing of our recipes, yes, that's how long it took. Yeah, it so great. now you're going to remove it from the heat. Yes, ma'am. And you're going to add in your heavy cream. Okay. Heavy cream. And the pecans. Now, do you say pecans? I say pecans. I th so that's how I always thought I was raised in Texas. So that's who's, what I do. Who says pecan, uh, pecans out in the audience? Oh, man. Okay. So I guess it's either or. All right. So then this is going to get spread. Once you've incorporated that, Alrighty. we're going to smear it on top of the crust. And this is hot, so be careful. Yes, ma'am. I want to make sure all the pecans get covered. Oh, yeah, and I think that's about ready to go. All righty, let me pour this okay. on for you then. All right, and then I'm just going to spread this about. This is going to go into a 350 degree oven for 25 to 30 minutes. And then once it's done and cooled, I just like to wrap it with um, saran wrap. And then when you get ready to cut it, depending on what you're using it for, either a plated dessert or a bite-sized piece, you can cut it up. All right, so come back with us in just a few minutes. We're going to get everything set up Perfect. for this Thanksgiving display. Awesome. Welcome back, everybody. And obviously, we're going to have a very happy Thanksgiving. We are. And hopefully, all of you will as well with all the tips and tricks that we've learned today. So, I want um, Chef Donald to go back through some of what we did today to emphasize some of those important points. Yeah, we're going to start off with that convection steam oven turkey. And for me, that steam oven really makes it super moist. But for me, the most mm. important thing is that brine putting it in that brine for at least a day, maximum of two days, really brings out that really great turkey flavor. Well, and great flavor also comes from great Thanksgiving gravy. Oh, so now you're speaking my that. language. <laughs> Absolutely. Gravy is what I love. Now the gravy we made today, we started off in a pot with the turkey drippings. Now these are gonna be the fatty drippings. From there, we're gonna add some flour and we're gonna make a very simple blonde roux. We're gonna add some of the turkey stock and some of the other juices from the drippings mm -hmm. in there also. And we're gonna bring it to a boil and let it simmer for about 10 to 15 minutes. We're gonna add a little bundle of sage to it <gasps> and we're just gonna add some of that Thanksgiving flavor to it and let it steep yes. for about five minutes. Well, and then you can reheat it, turn it off and reheat it at the last minute. Well, you've also got a new side dish for us as well. Yeah, for me, this is a great side dish. You can make it any time of the year and it's just grilled broccoli raw. And to do that, we brought a, a pot of water going to bo a boil with some salt. Always have to salt your water mm -hmm. whenever we're doing this. We're gonna boil it for about one minute. We're gonna take it out, put it into an ice bath and let it cool down really quickly. After that, we'll pull it out. We'll squeeze out any excess water mm -hmm. for, and then add it to a bowl with some olive oil, red pepper flakes, minced garlic, salt and pepper. Ooh. We're gonna throw it onto a hot grill Grill it for about three minutes, moving it pretty constantly because all we want is that char flavor. We're going to take it off, squeeze some fresh lemon juice right on top, and then you're ready to go. And look how bright green it still oh, is. I love it. Okay, tell us how you finished off the Parmesan. Now the Parmesan polenta, polenta. we cooked it, we added that butter and that Parmesan at the very end, and to mm -hmm. me that's the key. The more you can add to that, especially the butter, yeah. the better it's going to taste. So for me, Excellent side dish. Again, 
any time of the year. You don't have to do it just for Thanksgiving. That's exactly right. And speaking of Thanksgiving, Chef Donald and I have created some tips to kind of get you through Thanksgiving a couple of weeks ahead so you're not running around like a chicken with oh, your yeah. head cut off at the last minute. So we certainly want to do that. And then I put together the pecan square recipe, but you put it together yeah. and you told me you weren't a baker. I'm not so a baker, but an how'd I do? Job. You did great. Oh, thank you. And so for here, we've got two different ways to serve it, either bite size or plated warm with some vanilla ice cream and caramel sauce. It oh, would be amazing. Delicious. And so I certainly want to thank you, Chef Donald thank you, and Chef Rebecca for everything that you did to get us ready for this. We also had an amazing event last night. We did. With a crowd of people, I did a presentation, I signed cookbooks, it was so much fun. And I want to thank Sub-Zero, Wolf and Cove for their hospitality here in the Dallas showroom. Just completely remarkable. And then certainly my live audience today yes. who has made the history book in the on the very Vera show so for all of the rest of you I want you to have a wonderful Thanksgiving and remember no matter what you do do it in good taste please come back and join us again next week